Hey what's up and how's it going? This is Toby and in today's video we are going to build an amazing web AR face filter that runs within the browser of any device such as phones, tablets or even laptops and could be used for anything such as fun filters, for product showcases such as sunglasses or even for small games. And after this tutorial you'll even be able to send a link immediately to your friends and family so they can test it out on their devices. So without any further ado let's get started. So let's begin by downloading the Needle Engine. For that, open the link in the video description and click on the login button at the top right corner and either log in or create a new account. Then you should be on this dashboard here where you can also see all the projects uploaded to Needle Cloud and simply click download Unity plugin. Next up, open the Unity Hub, which can also be downloaded from unity.com and make sure you are logged in with your Unity account. Then click on new project and make sure to have Unity 2022 or Unity 6 as an editor version and give it a name such as WebXR Face Filter. Select a location and choose your organization and click on create project. Once Unity finished setting up the project, it should look something like this. The window arrangement might be a little different, but you can actually drag and drop those windows to arrange them to your liking. And if you're missing something out, you can find all of these within the window general tab. Next, let's import Needle by adding it as a custom package and then simply click on our downloaded file and select open and import. After that, the project setting window should open up and under Needle Engine, make sure to log into your account and then open the validation window. Here we'll need to accept the Euler and will also ask us to create an export component. We will, however, use a sample scene later on to get started, so we will not need this right now. If the project setting window didn't open for you, you can go to edit and select project settings. If we close the window, we can see the needle welcome screen, which we could also open up here in the needle engine menu and welcome window. And in either menu, let's click on explore examples. So here we have a whole bunch of sample scenes that we can use to get started quickly. And we can already see the face filters here. Then let's click on install sample, click yes. And after some time, all the samples should have been installed and we can open up the face filter sample. It will then install the web project and you should have something like this. We can already see here the face filters from the preview image and some other filters as well. One thing that we can do straight away is to select our export component in the scene and do a export to the local browser. This will start a local server, which will also allow us to test the experience immediately. Once the local server has started, we can simply select Open Server, and as it's locally hosted, we still need to signal Chrome that we can trust our own hosted project. And here we go. You can see that the face filter is already working quite well, and we can even switch between different filters. And entering the internal IP address on the phone is exactly the same, while ignoring these errors for now. Alright, so now we will need some new face filter 3D model and for that I went to Sketchfab and entered Helmet as well as made sure that the downloadable box is selected so we can actually download a model. After a bit of looking around for suitable models I found the Sci-Fi Helmet and after a login I downloaded it as a GLB with a size of 3 megabytes, which is pretty good for a web-based experience. Next, let's simply drag the GLB file into the Unity project and choose the Unity GLTF importer, which depending on your setup might already have been selected anyways. Then let's drag the 3D model into the scene and do a right click, select prefab and choose unpack. Then we can drag it back into the folder to create a prefab. When we move around the helmet, we can see that there seem to be some material issues and to solve that, let's click on the imported GLB file and in the materials tab select extract materials. Then we do have a new folder with the extracted material and since the count prefab is still using the material from the GLB file, let's reassign it. Next, let's click onto the material and tweak a few settings. Firstly, we want to set the render face to front instead of both, and that already looks a lot better here, but there's still some transparency going on. Next, let's set the render type to opaque and bring the roughness all the way down. Finally, let's scroll down and set the enable transmission dispersion to off. Now our helmet is looking really nice. To make sure that all is safe, let's quickly go to our overrides here and apply all. 
Finally, we can delete the prefab and when we drag it in again, we can see that all the changes have been saved properly. Now to turn it into a face filter is actually very easy. Let's click on the filter manager and there is already a small instruction here on how to use it. But essentially we can click on create new filter and can see that immediately a new prefab has been created. Now if we look at the structure here, we can see that it consists out of two main components, the face or head mesh as well as the asset that we want to use for the face filter. So then let's go ahead and delete the object here and let's also rename the filter into sci-fi helmet. Then from our assets, let's drag in the helmet to our new face filter prefab. So we can see right away that this is way too big. So let's make it a lot smaller and let's also rotate it by 180 degrees so it fits the face. Now we can see the facial outlines here shine through a bit and we can use this as a reference to position and further scale the helmet. Awesome, so once we're done we can leave the prefab view and save. By the way, Needle will then auto-export the project to immediately deploy the changes to our local host. You can also switch that off in the export game object if you want. Then let's go to our Needle face filter folder and drag in our prefab into the scene. In our filter manager we can see that our sci-fi helmet was already added as the last element in our list. Let's grab it and drag it all the way up so we can test it right away. We can also quickly drag our new face filter next to the existing one here to compare sizing, but I think that looks great so far. So then let's go to the export object and as we already saved, our changes should already be live on the local server. And yes, here we go, we have our face filter running. However, the helmet prefab we just dragged into the scene is still in the background, so let's quickly fix that. Back in the editor, we can simply deactivate the prefab here. Now, if we want to share this filter with our friends and family, we can, on the export object, click on the Upload to Needle Cloud button. And this will upload it online onto the Needle Cloud and once done, open up a link that we can simply send to anyone. You can also fund the project in the Needle Cloud and can get the link from here as well. All right, but that's it for this video. So I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something. If you want to see more about web AR, please leave a comment below. But until then, as always, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.